Three weeks ago, NetEase released the English version of their game Life After, and guys, this game is amazing. I had heard rumors that the Chinese were more advanced in the area of making mobile games, but now I have seen it firsthand. Just when you think the game can't get any better, you learn about a whole new aspect of the game that blows you away. I know some of you are having trouble getting started in this game, so I'm going to do my best to guide you guys a little bit. Today I have 111 tips and tricks for you, and those tips will get more advanced as the video progresses. After choosing your name, you will have the option to choose your dog type. This is not a huge decision because they all start out with the same skill and their habits are randomized. But I recommend choosing the Labrador because he is given two extra storage slots, which I will explain why I think that is important a little later on. You will be prompted to do a tutorial. The tutorial is a little bit long and it's not nearly as fun as playing the actual game. But if you are new, it's still good to do it because it introduces you to every concept that is in the game. And even if you're a veteran from another server, you still still might want to do the tutorial if you can do it with another friend because it gives 300 friendship points which is one of the fastest ways to get that many friendship points. After the tutorial is finished the game begins and they do a great job of guiding you through it but let me give you a few tips real quick for those of you who are brand new. This tab has a list of all your quests. If you scroll down it will tell you exactly how far along you are at completing that quest and all of the other quests that you have active. Clicking on a quest will move it to the top of the list and give you an indicator on your map if there is a specific place you need to go. Double clicking on the tab will also bring up a list that is separated based on the different areas which is sometimes easier to understand. It also lets you hide quests from being listed on the tab. The second tab is your team tab which is pretty self-explanatory. If you see line B or C next to a teammate's name that means they are in an alternate universe and one of you will need to switch over in order to do anything. See each other, complete quests together, or even get friendship points. But once they do switch over over, they will stay in the area even if you kick them out, which is helpful when you are trying to invite your whole camp to a boss fight. To add a friend, click here, then contact, and then type their name here. After that, I recommend going into settings and selecting the left fixed point option, and then clicking the customize button and slightly enlarging the joystick. Then I recommend bunching all of these controls further to the corner so that you have more visibility and it's easier to look around without shooting. I also switch my run and grenade buttons because first, it reminds me that I have have grenades, but also it makes it easier to select and aim those grenades in the middle of a battle. And then lastly, I recommend increasing your crosshair sensitivity to at least 60. All of these are important and you should check them out if they have red dots, but the most important of these is the newbie guide. This guide provides quests with awesome rewards, but more importantly, those quests give you a linear progression to advance in the game. Since Life After is a sandbox type game, this guide is your key to progressing in the game. It will take you through every new area and teach you the basics of those areas. That being said, there are a few things that you should know as you progress through this guide. For example, you should go to Billy and join an active camp as soon as possible. There are countless benefits of being part of a camp and every action you take while you are playing the game can help your rank within that camp. If you want to know more about how to get all of the benefits of your camp and be an awesome camp member, make sure to check out my video including everything about camps. Personal progression in life after has four parts. The first one is your three mastery levels. This is covered by the newbie guide, but it only covers the basics. If you're used to playing games like Skyrim, you might be tempted to grind for experience. Since higher level tools and weapons give a lot more experience per use, this would be a complete waste of time on multiple levels. Understanding how to best get experience is crucial to leveling up quickly. The first and most obvious way is by doing everything listed in the daily tab. This includes all of the main events and main quests that you can do every day. This list grows longer the higher level you get. Clicking on one of these dailies will tell you exactly how much experience you can get that day and what kind of experience you can get for completing those tasks. Which is great, but ideally you would do all of your dailies, so there's not a lot of strategy to this. The strategy comes into play with the other two ways of getting experience. The second way of getting experience is through actions. Gathering materials gives you gathering experience, crafting items gives you crafting experience, and doing damage to enemies gives you combat experience. Gathering experience is in my opinion the most important of these three because it unlocks the most amount of options for you. But the amount of gathering experience you get varies drastically based on how much vigor you have in your meter. Players are given 10 vigor every 10 minutes with a maximum storage of 600. When your vigor is above 200 it is used twice as fast and you get twice as much experience. So if you want to maximize your time then you want to make sure your vigor stays above 200. So if you play the game in bursts like at night or on weekends then you need to learn to ration 
action how you use your vigor. One way to do this is to save fishing and farming for bathroom breaks. You want to make sure that you never let your vigor cap out and stay there for too long, so wait to harvest the things in your fields until those times that your vigor is high but you don't really have time to play. You can also use vigor fishing on auto at the camp dock assuming that you can leave your phone running, but this consumes a lot of vigor for not that much experience, so only do this if your vigor was otherwise going to waste, though it is a really good source of food. Twice a day you can do the furniture recycling quest at Hope 101 to get a drumstick meal which restores 200 vigor. This is essential for those of you who are busy during the week but free during weekends. If you use the trick I explained later on, this quest will take less than two minutes so it can easily be done during the bathroom break and then you can save those drumsticks for the weekend. The third way to get experience is through the NPCs scattered throughout the zones. These NPCs have quests that also give experience and sometimes they are the exact same tasks that you were given from the map bulletin so that you can get two rewards for the same task. Also if you find special items like black amber you can give them to those NPCs for even more rewards. Those rewards scale based on your mastery level so I would recommend waiting as long as possible before turning them in. As you get to higher levels if you are a free to play player you will have to choose between skills because you won't have enough skill points to buy everything. Also you will be given a chance to choose a profession with new skills of its own. Make sure to choose this carefully because it costs real money if you want to change your profession later. If you're not sure what profession you should choose, make sure to check out my video describing the pros and cons of all the different professions. The second area of personal progression is by building attachments for your weapon and armor and then upgrading them. You can build them in the armor and weapon shops at your camp or at Hope 101. After you build them, you can upgrade these attachments for huge benefits by combining them with the matching components of the same level. Getting higher level of components also requires combining components of the same level, meaning that each new level is twice as hard as the previous one. This type of exponential scaling can get pretty overwhelming quickly, so this means that in order to get all six of your attachments to the max of 12 stars, you will need 12,282 components, which is kind of impossible. The easiest components to get is through doing Nancy Town. Completing all of the objectives every day will give you enough points to buy 3.5 components. After that, you can buy four components for 3,000 new dollars each at the armor and weapon shops. After that, you can buy 10 components for 2,000 gold each at the mall. And then after that, you can buy 10 more components a day at the mall for real money. The Hope Fund also gives the equivalent of 16 components. This means that as a free-to-play player, it would take 700 days to max out your attachments. And even if you're a pay-to-win player, it takes 445 days and hundreds of dollars. So obviously, NetEase is not intending us to max out these attachments. And fortunately for us, even if someone does twice as much work for us, they will still only get one attachment's worth of advantage. The third area of personal progression is through research. By spending formula shards and gold, you are able to unlock new formulas to build better items. Duplicate formulas are turned into formula R&D data, which you can use at the exchange center to buy new formulas, or you can use them to upgrade the formulas you already have. I'm not an expert on formulas yet because I have not unlocked Fusion 4, but as soon as I do, I will make a video explaining the most efficient way to do research. In the meantime, I have a strong hunch that it is best for us to do as little research as possible now to save all of our research points for when we hit Fusion 4. The fourth area of progression is your manor level. Upgrading your manor is the key to unlocking new weapons, workbenches, and everything else that has to do with your house. I'm not really going to cover this one because it's pretty self-explanatory and it's covered very well by the newbie guide, but someday I hope to make a video on how to best design your house. So those are the four areas of progression in this game and you need to balance working on all of them at the same time because as I showed you with weapon components, you are limited to how much you can do on them each day. Other than that, focus all of your attention on the newbie guide. It will take you through each new zone as they get unlocked and explain everything that I did not explain here until you become an advanced player. So that should get you guys started, but in addition to those 54 tips, I have 57 more for you. I recommend starting out by making your dog a pack dog. Search dogs can find cool items, but they usually aren't that great, whereas a pack dog can provide 12 extra storage spaces and 14 if you have a Labrador. When you consider how much it costs to increase your backpack space by two, this is a crazy amount of storage. And then when you become a higher level, you can spend a thousand gold to switch your dog to a guard dog if you want the extra protection. They are more effective at a higher level anyways. If you're using a pack dog, I recommend keeping two extra tools in there or some iron so that you can build them in the sand, snow, and swamp zones. And then I recommend 
recommend carrying four meat, four mushrooms, and four vegetables so that it's easier to complete the NPC quest when they come up. I also recommend keeping some little branches in there because they are the best item to use as gifts to gain favor with NPCs. In the furniture recycling event, multiple people can grab the same stack. So if you have a team of four, you only need to find two large stacks to complete the whole quest. When you unlock a new level of tools, throw away your old ones. Higher level tools give way more resources and you get more gathering experience per vigor used. Theoretically, you would want to do this with weapons too, but weapons are a lot more expensive. So once a weapon is too low to be useful, make sure to dismantle them for a refund of some of the resources. The camp boss on Sundays and camp invasions make it to where you use barely any of the durability of your weapons, just like Miska University. But unlike Miska, you get combat experience for shooting your weapon. Combat mastery usually advances the slowest because people are trying to conserve their weapons, so it is important to bring your best gun to these events to make sure you get the maximum amount of experience. Unlocking spaces in your garden will transfer when you move to a camp, so it's a great use of your gold early game. Also, if you have an almost broken mining rig when you transfer, they will give you a brand new one in your mailbox, which isn't a whole lot now, but back then when I transferred, it was really nice. Spending gold to ship extra items home is always cheaper than buying them in the market, but you might want to store some of them because as you get higher and higher level, it takes a lot more time to hit the quota in every zone available to you. Also, if you are new to a certain zone and you are in need of a ton of those new resources, it might be good to store all of your green items because they usually hit quota first and then come back and get those items as you have need of them. But if you do that, make sure to come back and fill the quota before the day ends. Using auto on fishing wastes a lot of bait, but it's really nice to be able to play AFK. Honestly, fishing has the lowest experience per vigor use ratio of anything in the game. So if you're wanting to advance quickly and have the time to devote to it, then you should save fishing until you run out of vigor. Double clicking here while you're in a zone gives you extra information about the zone and its weather conditions. You can share with your friends a link to almost anything in the game by selecting the item, clicking on the three dots, and then the share button. The annoying double beep you hear from time to time is the transition between day and night. If you ever get stuck on the map, click on settings and hit solve jam. Once you move into the oozy stage of the game, it is important to build multiple guns. Barrel overheating not only decreases its stats, but it makes the gun go through more durability and gains you less combat experience. I recommend keeping at least two guns on you at all times. In fact, I currently have four guns that I circulate through, and after all of them run out of ammo, I go to the nearest zone that is occupied by a camp and reload all four of them at the same time for free. The first time you kill a boss, you get extra rewards, and you only have to get one shot off on the boss to get the reward. So if you're too low levels to kill a boss in that area, then you need to get skilled at freeloading off of others. There is a mini boss in every map in the hardest part of the zone. They don't drop as good of rewards, but they're still worth doing if you have a good team. This rocket guy can be killed by yourself if you're standing on this rock and move to avoid the red areas. If you haven't unlocked the stronghold of a map yet, playing card games is the fastest way to get secondary resources. But there is a limit on how many resources you can get from playing card games. That limit is separate for each map. In Sandcastle, the caves are not the only place that allows you to breathe. You can hang out in the Cynthia buildings, the entrance to the Sandcastle stronghold battle, and mercenary buildings. In fact, my favorite time to do quests that require killing mercenaries or collecting their chests is during sandstorms. You don't take a lot of damage until your lungs hit three dots and entering a safe area immediately resets your lungs so it's easy to farm the area close to those buildings. You can grab one item at a time from your inbox by double clicking on just that item. This tab is based on a date so make sure to use all of these points before this date or else you will lose them. You can store all of your items in your inbox but I don't recommend doing that because it makes it very difficult to know what you have. Rather I recommend making a giant storeroom with a ton of chests on your first floor and then naming those chest based on the type of materials you would like to put in them. Then put one chest that is easy to access and use the switch button and move same items button to put away all of your stuff quickly. All of the chests have to be on the same floor in order to make this work. In the camp boss fight, place med kits before you place ladders so that you can get healing while you're protected. I'm going to make a video with a ton of tips and tricks about Nancy Town, but in the meantime, the biggest trick that a lot of new players don't realize is that when you die, you can click on the zone that you would like to spawn at. 
The quality of fish that you catch has very little to do with your location or even really your bait. Rather, the quality has almost everything to do with the fishing pole you are using and a little bit on your fishing mastery level. That being said, you can catch different types of rare fish in different locations, which unlocks new recipes. Anytime you need healing, use stronghold points to buy a ton of hemp to make bandages. You will literally be able to get all of the healing you could ever want and still have thousands of points left over. Buying trees in the first stronghold is the best way to get twigs and buying trees in the second stronghold is the best way to get little branches which as I said earlier is the best item to use to get favor from NPCs which is actually really useful because if you make friends with NPCs they have a chance of sending you gifts in the mail Farming during the day lets you see a lot more resources than it does at night. Keeping your hunger and health bar high will give you the invigorated buff, which gives you plus 5% damage, 5% movement speed, 5% collection speed, and minus 20% energy consumed when running. This is a huge buff and definitely makes it worth trying to keep the invigorated buff active as much as possible. Early on, you will notice that most of the items that you make are not tradable. In order to have a tradable item, you will have to have done at least one formula modification for the item you are making and it needs to gain a high enough score to become at least green. When you're making food items they are prioritized in the reverse of how they are listed. I can choose one puffer fish and three of any of the items above it and still get its healing effect. The effects are based on the quality of ingredients but you can stretch the effects a lot further if you use cheaper items like berries to fill in the other spaces. As soon as I finish the list I will make a video that has all of the food combinations and will which ones I think are best. If you are fighting a boss in a big group and it targets you, don't run away or it will just reset. Rather, run around in circles until he targets someone else. If you end up dying, stay there because people are usually really good about picking you up after the boss is killed so that you can get the reward. Make sure to use your bed to restore the durability of your armor and weapons to its maximum amount every day. This will save you a ton of resources, but I recommend doing this during the day because using the bed keeps your character in the game which prevents you from being able to get the hot event compensation from events that you weren't able to accomplish that day. If you are too busy to do anything make sure you at least log on and preferably accept the quest for that day so that you get a bigger hot event compensation when the day resets. Well that's it guys hope that helps. I have a ton of tips and tricks that I did not mention in this video because I wanted to reserve them for those videos that I was talking about. If this game takes off like I hope it will then I will be able to do all of those videos and a lot more. If you like this game and would like me to do more content on it, please subscribe so that I know about your interest. And if you like the video, please leave a like. All right, guys, see you next time.